It's the beginning of March and I haven't had to cut the grass in a long time. So the mower's been all tucked away in the corner here. So I made it so the seat comes off and the steering wheel comes off without any tools. Oh, and the mower deck also comes off. They're spending the winter up there in the loft to stay out of the way. I really appreciate the content of a lot of YouTubers who video themselves as they build their projects. I wish I could do that. But taking video as you go, it's just a lot of work. Setting up, making sure the camera's facing you, narrating, as if building these projects isn't hard enough. So, you'll get just another slideshow for the most part of this build process. This zero turn mower project was built almost entirely from the snapper rear engine rider. I got this on Craigslist. The original engine it came with was a mess. I eventually got this old girl running, but that was too much for this part of the project. For just 75 bucks, I could pick up this running engine and gain a few horsepower in the process. Here's some upright clamped in place that will hold the steering and the engine controls. The wheel in the back, which is used for tight turning, I'll cover more in the steering video. And you can see the bar that goes back to that wheel came from the front of the original snapper. Here are the uprights welded in place with some cross members and supports I made from some scrap steel I had lying around. A common question I get is how did you reverse the direction of travel of the mower? The answer is I didn't. You see here what's circled in yellow used to be the back of the snapper rear engine rider. The mower traveled in this direction. The mower deck was in the center of the old snapper rear engine rider, which is now the front. It stayed in roughly the same position, and eventually I cut that seat platform off. Snapper rear engine riders have a slow start clutch so they don't do wheelies, but that's not a concern for this build, so I made some modifications so the drivetrain wouldn't slip. Okay, here's my clutch setup for what used to be the snapper rear engine rider. Um, I got this idea for making this uh, slow start clutch into a fixed clutch from Jim Jackson's video, which I'll put a link to in the description if I remember. But this is essentially the brake drum and the clutch mounting uh, plate, I guess you call it, that would be on the tractor and what I did was make some studs in the plate and I did this so I could take advantage of the pre-drilled 5 16 hole that come in the new clutch um, what I have here is a piece of aluminum flashing, which I would put around this drum mounting plate to take up the extra space so there's no gap in there. Easier said than done. got to be tight fit so of course it doesn't go together easily all right there we go and then 
So these holes should line up. Just have to rotate this a little bit. So the holes I drilled through the plate align with the pre-drilled holes in the whatever you call this clutch wheel. This should be going together. I think this goes on the tractor this way. The brake rides in here. Um, this mounting keyed spindle, whatever you call it, goes inside here. Then the plate with the welded in stud go on top here so that these holes line up. So not that way. Not that way. Um, okay. Like this. And these bolts go in here. Okay, so now these studs come so they're just about flush here, enough to lock these two pieces together, but not sticking out to interfere with the brake. And the advantage of having the studs welded onto this plate is that now when I need to replace my clutch wheel, I don't have to do any drilling. These studs will align with the pre-drilled holes in this clutch wheel. So, I don't know, hopefully it'll work. After cleaning the gearbox, the next step was to move the shifting lever. It used to be next to the seat up front, but I had to move it back where I could reach it from where the seat will now be. Here you could see looking down at the side where the shifting lever has been mounted. I had to change the linkage underneath to reach forward instead of reaching back. Here you can see where I have placed the shifting lever. The next step was the clutch slash brake pedal. On the rear engine rider, this was cable operated, but I added a solid steel linkage straight in so it comes from the back now. Here you can see me pushing it down. The pedal pushes on this bracket which is underneath the chassis which holds the clutch wheel against the drive plate. It uses a spring to hold tension and when you push on the pedal the tension is released. I use some leftover parts and scrap steel to make a mount for the seat. The crossbar is welded on the frame. I had this gas tank from my tractor project, but it was very corroded inside. Put some pebbles in there, and mounted it on the pillar, cleaned it up inside. After it was all cleaned up, I treated it with some Pour 15. Here's the mounting bracket for the gas tank. And here's the gas tank mounted in place. In upcoming videos, I'll cover how the steering works, how I mounted the mower deck out front, and the final finishing touches needed to complete the project.